Welcome back to another episode of Home Sweet Home Cooking. I am your host, Rocky. My mom is running around the kitchen behind me, which is totally expected after all this is her kitchen. This video is going to be about not necessarily the recipe for making biscuits, but some of the techniques how to get biscuits to come out in different ways. Uh, I'm not a perfect biscuit maker. Um, we're Yankees. I don't ever remember my mom rolling out and cutting biscuits. Uh, we did a lot of Bisquick biscuits growing up. She has made biscuits for uh, like Popeyes or a uh, uh, yeah, like a pot pie kind of thing. Yeah. Where you cover, you make your stew meat and you cover the biscuits. She's done things like that to make biscuits. But I don't ever remember her making and rolling out biscuits to go with breakfast or for a side for a meal. But I did. I just don't remember. But now that I'm in the South, I'm a biscuit boy. I mean, I'm, I'm a biscuit boy. So we're going to follow. I say this isn't about the recipe itself. This is about the techniques. White lily self-rising flour. I normally make biscuits with all-purpose flour and add my own leavenings, the soda and the powder, but I have a bag of this because my girlfriend accidentally got, accidentally got the self-rising, so I'm going to use it and pretty much follow the recipe off the back with one substitution. It calls for two cups, so I'm going to go ahead and do four. So I'm going to double this. Uh, your cup just broke, your measuring cup. All for heaven's sake. So one. Two. Three. And four. I think I lightened that a little bit. So I had just a touch more. Alright, four cups. That's two cups doubled. Next ingredient. The recipe calls for Crisco all vegetable shortening. My I'm not using Crisco. My vegetable shortening actually says lard, because I'm sorry. I think lard makes a better biscuit. So I'm gonna go ahead and use lard instead of shortening. And it calls for a quarter cup for the recipe. I'm going to do a half cup. This is room temperature lard. I know people say, oh, use cold shortening or cold butter and cut it in because it's got to be cold. It's got to be cold. It kind of proves it doesn't have to be cold. And uh, being all uh, self-rising flour, I'm not adding any soda. I'm not adding powder. I'm not adding any salt. That's all in the mix already in the flour. Make sure your hands are clean. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go through and you can do this with a fork. You can do it with a, with a pastry cutter. But I'm just going to get in there and I'm going to start pinching the flour into the lard or shortening. And you're just going to keep pinching. If you do it fast enough and you don't want to squeeze it super hard, you're just kind of pressing the flour into it. It's going to make eventually, it's going to start getting into pea sized lumps of lard. And you want to squish that out and rub the flour into it. And you're going to end up with a gravelly, sandy looking mixture. And that's when you know you've gone to the right consistency. Just mix it in. Make sure you rotate the, all the flour through it. Just kind of keep squeezing. Just, just want to pinch and rub. And if you got kids, you can have them do this just as long as you teach them to go slow so you don't get a flower volcano. And when you get down to most of the lard and shortening pieces not being pea sized or maybe, I don't know, granola sized, you're getting close. If you grab a handful of it and squeeze it, your flour should still crumble apart, but it should come together at first, but just easily fall apart like that. Make sure you get some of the, all the lumps out of it. Alright, I think that's good. Get the rest of that off my hands there. Just 
the oh man, rip it off my shirt. The next ingredient. Uh, the, the other reason why I'm doing this today, for no particular reason other than the fact that I'm doing it, is I had a half gallon of buttermilk in my fridge, and it's actually uh, I think two days past the expiration date. Um, let me see. Yeah, it smells like it went bad, but <laughs> it's buttermilk. <laughs> it's still good. Uh, it calls for three quarters of a cup of buttermilk or two thirds cup of milk. So I doubled that for my buttermilk. I'm using a cup and a half. Now I'm going to switch to a fork. Well, it's kind of loud to the camera, huh? She's over there opening mail, making noise. Now you're just going to mix it in. You don't have to go crazy mixing it in. You just want to get, for the most part, make sure the flour is squeezed in off the bottom, or smushed in off the bottom. So as you run your fork down through the bottom, you see the bottom of the bowl and not dry flour. go there. Once you get most of the buttermilk in, go ahead and get a little bit of flour in your hand. Then you can get in there and work the rest of it around. And pick up the rest of the flour off the bottom of the dish. Just roll it over upside down, push it in. And that's your basic dough. You don't have to. Some people say you're not supposed to let it rest because you're really not letting it rise, but you are going to let it rest. You want the buttermilk to have a chance to soak up all that flour and uh, get the flour wet. So I'm just going to put this in the fridge for about a half an hour, at least 15 minutes, cover it up and uh, put it in there for like a little bit of time. And then I'll be back and I'll show you how to roll them out, make your biscuits, and then the technique part of it comes in, which is actually going to affect how it bakes. So be back in about a half an hour. So my dough is rested in the fridge for about a half an hour. Next thing is going to be to roll them out, or not really roll them out. Don't have to roll them, but you do need flour, a little bit of flour on your work surface. We're going to be adding more flour as we go. That's not nearly enough, but it's a start. Now I want to do this, like I said, this is for tips. So I'm going to actually break this dough into two sections. Because it's a double batch. <laughs> no, because we're doing two different things. First one is after it sits, I'm just going to fold it out, fold it over once. Fold it over twice, and now I'm just going to get it flattened. If you're looking for about three quarters to an inch. You can use, they make biscuit cutters that are deep. Um, a regular cookie cutter usually isn't quite deep enough to, uh, to do this. So I'm just going to use a, a glass. Um, depends on how big you want them. If you're just doing biscuits to go with a meal, two inches is probably fine. Push down to get the surface. Don't twist. Is that how they do it at Hardee's? I wouldn't know. I've never worked at Hardee's. <laughs> never made the biscuits at Hardee's, yes. Uh, I don't remember. That was 30 years ago. Probably more than. All right. Just lay these out. I need six of them for this test. So just lay those out for me. Three rows of two. Now I'm just gonna bring the dough back together. I'm not really folding it over on itself too much. I want them touching. Oh, you want yeah, them touching? These, these I, I want touching. Said. These I want touching. But quarter inch from the wall, quarter inch maybe from each other, just barely touching. Um, this is one of the myths or things that people say. You say you don't want them to touch. Some people say you do want them to touch. Touching them to each other actually allows the biscuit to grab the next biscuit and help 
climb. So that's what this is going to simulate. Now these two I want going this way for the next row. And then the last one will be right there. All right. And this one is just going to be the poor little old lonely by itself. Control biscuit. This one is not going to be touching anything else. So it's going to be up here. I want it right there. You want it there? Yeah, I want it right there. Uh, no, no, this one. I want uh, rows of three. All right, now the next other half. This one, oh, she tried. She tried to flower split me. This one I'm going to need a little more flour into. And actually knead the dough a little bit. People say you have to knead the dough. This is unneeded. This one is actually kneaded, and I'm working a little more flour into it. What it's going to do, that's going to change the texture of the overall biscuit. And that's what part of this test is, to see exactly what it does. Okay, if these are not needed, why are you making them? Because they're necessary. <laughs> Just because they're not needed doesn't mean they're not necessary. Oh. All right. So once you need some flour into it, same thing. I'm going to stretch it out to about three quarters to an inch. Just run the rim of the, the glass through the flour, flour a little bit. Straight down, no twists. Touching or no? Yep. I want these to touch these as well. uniformity to it. When you start getting the ends after your first cut you'll have some natural layers form in there if you fold it over. Close enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's making it worse. Yeah. Just so it cuts a little bit off. And this one on its own. Now, this is where some of the, the tips and tricks come in. These are going to be a little more moist because I didn't work as much flour into it. These are floured. Some people will just go ahead and put. Um, don't want to get the flour on the bottom. That's falling in the oven and burn. They'll just put these in the oven just the way they are. They're some of these are going to dome over the top, and I'm going to try to get some that rise up across the top and are flat. To do that, you want to take your thumb and push in the middle. So you're pushing down at least halfway through. I'm going to do that on the second row of each of these. And mom, if you, we're going to uh, dress the top of these with liquid. We're going to do, this row is just going to be brushed in buttermilk. So just these four here. And this is going to help the color, the browning on the top. That's probably good. And it may also help keep the top a little more moist from forming too hard of a crust. You don't want it to pull up too much in the middle there. Okay, and then these four brush with the melted butter. Um, these will get buttered when they come out of the oven as well, but before, like I say, this is going to be dry, topped with buttermilk, and topped with butter prior to baking. And we're going to see if moist dough versus dry dough makes a difference. 
versus what they look like buttermilk or not with the thumbprints in or not and this is all just as it's saying it's experimentation to see which what's right with what people say is to do so let's go ahead and just butter the tops of those two because we have a little bit of butter left and according to the package the oven is preheating to 475 degrees it is up to 400 so not quite there and they're going to bake for eight to ten minutes or until golden brown and we'll see what they look like when they come out biscuits well they're going to be biscuits but i want to see the differences if if these different techniques actually make a difference that's what we're trying to find out okay All right be back in a bit okie doke it's out of the oven so what do we have here uh these definitely that we're touching gave a uniform rise whether the thumbprint was in them or not but the ones that were on their own definitely domed over so if you're doing biscuits for just the table there's no reason why you can't leave them apart but if you want to do biscuits to do uh to cut in half and put stuff inside bacon eggs sausage you kind of want this even rise so you don't have just a little bit of this guy on the outside and whatever so uh what have the best rise well these have decent color and these did not get a topping on it these were just the plain these have some shine to it from the buttermilk i did put the broiler on for about a minute minute and a half towards the end uh just to get a little more brown on them um these weren't quite as brown as these but as soon as the broiler went on these picked up more color the buttered ones, um, they all kind of feel the same. They picked up a little bit of a color too. I would say that the best looking bunch of them is this row right here, wouldn't you think? Yep. So this is a wet dough. This dough, I fold it over a few more times. You can actually see how this one is more of a solid, but these here kind of flaked open where you could actually have those flaky layer biscuits. So if you just want a biscuit that you're going to put apart and put butter, these would probably do. If you want a biscuit that you can cut open and make a sandwich out of, I think folding over make them a little drier. So for table biscuits, these. For breakfast biscuits, add a little flex, uh, add, mix in the yeah. need a little more flour. Uh, go ahead, let's brush them with some butter. Butter should not a whole lot. The butter should soak in pretty good. That's enough, I think. And then we'll grab a knife. We'll cut a couple of these open. So I want to see what the insides of, like I said, the ones I needed versus not needed. You touched the pan, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Pan's hot. 400. I don't know if I said 425 or 475. I can't remember. It's a 475 degree oven for eight to ten minutes. Ours went about ten minutes plus uh, about a minute, minute and a half with the broiler on. But I will tell you right now, these do smell good. I love the yeah, smell they of do. biscuits. Now these, like I said, these were the scrap ones towards the end. Um, this one here, I kind of condensed back up and it's still domed up. This one here is kind of just your, what everybody calls the ugly biscuit. What the, the Southerners, the, the, the biscuit ladies call the ugly biscuit is one that you kind of smush back together and it you get all these folds and crinkles and lines in. Um, Let's check the bottom of them. Nice brown bottom of them. Not too burnt, not too light, not too dark. The ones that are side by side have a little bit less darkening. Yeah, they're all perfect. That's that's a perfect biscuit bottom right there, I just think. Mm-hmm. Woo ha ha ha! Alrighty, how much butter we got left there? Good. Um, because we're gonna put some on the inside. I'm gonna crack open a couple of these. I'm gonna grab a knife, please. Yes, yeah, sir. And then we'll use this to brush the butter on the inside to butter some biscuits. Uh, like I said, I'm a biscuit boy. I love breakfast biscuits in the morning with um, biscuits and gravy is probably one of my favorite breakfast meals. Me too. But I do also do like uh, sausage and egg biscuit. Um, I like sausage and egg McMuffins. I like putting just some syrup on. My girlfriend likes syrup on biscuits. She burnt herself again. Eat your heart. So. <laughs> Let's do, we'll do this one here. This is the one that was 
more dry. It's, uh, okay, it's flaky. It's not, I had a, I made some biscuits last week at my house, and they turned out spongy in the middle, like cake. Um, these are definitely not that. The, there's not big bubbles like that. And at house, I used um, all-purpose flour with leavening agents. Let's go with this one, one in the middle. That's definitely got more of a distinct layer. A little more dense, still flaky. I don't really think there's going to be too much difference between the texture of them by rolling them in extra, the extra kneading of flour. They kind of seem textured the same. They got a little more rise out of the, the kneaded ones, which was a surprise. I thought these would rise more being moist like that. And seeing we have melted butter. Got to give these a taste. You want a whole or a half one? Half. Half of a half? Half of a half. Half of a half. Top or bottom? Who cares? Now this was the the one that didn't fold in any extra. Ah. It's a biscuit. More butter, more better. <laughs> um, yeah, I could sit down with some some fried chicken and go to town on this. Just a little bit of honey on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the myths, the the tips that I was looking at was using the thumb. I didn't really see any difference in the rise, nor. Did I see any appreciable difference? This one got a, a shinier, different color by brushing it, brushing it before versus brushing it or not br with butter, without butter. I don't see. I think just the the plain top biscuits look the best without the thumbprints and touching. I mean that there. That's a fantastic looking biscuit. So there's you know there's a suggestion for you. Need a little extra flour into them. Don't put your thumbprint in them. Make them touch and put them in the oven. Don't put any topping on it. Brush them with butter when you're done. Let that soak up a little bit of butter, but I think you don't have to do anything extra. There's nothing special about making biscuits. All these little family tips and tricks. They're just tricks. Yeah, I, I don't see an appreciable difference in them, so myths are busted, I guess. <laughs> All right, folks. Get out there and make your own biscuits. These are, I said, I just... I love biscuits. Um, better than bread. Easy to make. In this case, because I didn't. Hmm. Mom taught me not to talk with my mouth full. <laughs> and your mouth is always full. Oh, shush. <laughs> um, nothing special with the self rising flour. You didn't have to add, but shortening flour and buttermilk. Three ingredients, folks three ingredients in a little bit of time. Oh, pear butter? Mm-hmm. Um, if you're doing the, with uh, all-purpose flour, you have to add three more ingredients. That would be your salt, your baking powder, and baking soda. But if you just want to have simple ingredients, go with the self rising, keep your bag in there, keep you some lard or some shortening, and you don't have to use buttermilk, it can be milk. And Easy, easy peasy, pear butter squeezy. Now, if you're really nice, we might sometime make <laughs> pear butter. So much work. <laughs> the it's, peeling is the worst. Yeah, but the, oh yeah, pear butter, apple butter, mm. orange marmalade. Mm. This is this is what you call slap your mama good. <laughs> Love you, mama. All right, folks. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it with your friends to show how simple it is to make their own biscuits. If you don't have any bread to throw on a table for dinner, this is it. It's easy. It's quick. Uh, and make sure you like, like, share, and subscribe. Do all the stuff that all the YouTubers ask for. Help us keep doing more videos and hopefully get to show you more delicious recipes like this. Thanks, y'all. Have a good day. Y'all. <laughs> oh, jeez. Where were you born? <laughs>